sometimes I'll, I'll focus on one artist. Sometimes I'll focus on a bunch. It's called I do what the fuck I want. And you'll fucking like it, you bitch. You take what I've got to fucking give you. This is a box containing comics. Um, I've got piles. <laughs> bleed from the anus on a regular basis of comics um, and this box sits on my shelf it contains a few select issues of comics that I like it contains a few series of comics that I like and I thought I'd just flip through it it's been a while since I really looked through them so we'll, we'll look and see what's the what um, I'll put it like this and no I won't because it'll fall out <laughs> Oh, no clue what the fuck I'm doing. Can't. That'll work. Um, well, the first, the first bunch is uh, Lobo. As we've, I've looked through those. Check out my Simon Bisley video where I look through these comics. So that's that's a whole chunk of the box done already. Hooray! A flying start. Um, oh, I, I want to. Maybe, I'll, mm, whatever, I'll keep it like this because then it's more of a surprise. The next chunk are the Max. Um, a creator-owned comic by uh, near-legendary comic book artist Sam Keith. Um, this is his own character. Uh, the, he's, he's done loads of stuff for Marvel um, and other thing. I don't know what he's done. He's done a bunch. It's a good, quite a popular uh, Hulk and Wolverine comic that he did. It's quite a lot of good Wolverine artwork. This is issues one, two, three, and two copies of issue six. For some reason, um, I think when I bought them, it was on eBay, and it was like a, a, a bunch all together. So, hence the. Anyway, this is about the art, not about my fucking biography of buying comics. Sam Keith's art is very uh, unique in, in specially, in specially, in terms, that's cool, that's his character, the Max. He's like some homeless guy who's a superhero, kind of, but not, it's quite questionable as to whether or not he is actually a superhero. Um, yeah, his art is, is very, uh, well, I don't know, it's, it's artistic. Uh, you know, he does very well in terms of comic book art like inking that's a pretty standard you know looking comic book art piece um but very true of image comics and their creator owned uh, series uh lots of you know muscles and hatching and lines and shit going on uh from the 90s when it was created um but then he does get very sort of uh well i don't want to say cartoony because he is quite the cartoonist, uh, illustrator and artist. Um, and his artwork sort of reflects that quite often. Um, as you can see, some probably Frazetta inspiration there. Uh, so he does, you know, superhero type shit a lot. As he's done, you know, very good. I'm saying you know a lot. Uh, he's done very good Hulk and Wolverine. That's cool. That's really cool. I like that. Oh, wait. I think I missed the very end of issue one. There you go. That's the good shit. The money shot. The cum shot of the comic. The facial. Get it in her eye a bit. Very cool muscles and shit. Good shit. Good shit. Good shit. Good shit. Very, very good shit. Um, the comic itself is kind of interesting. I think it's it was made quite sort of like um, train, train of thoughts, the, the term for that. Uh, very much sort of... It seems like it may have been sort of made up on the go as he's, as he's making it, he's making it up as he goes. Um, tra tra sort of stream of consciousness. <laughs> that's, the, that's the word we're looking for. <laughs> um... And then there's this weird, like, double world thing within the story. Um, and after, like, the first bunch of issues, it even stops focusing on the Max as a character and focuses on these other people and the backstories. And it gets really sort of 
weird and abstract and obscure. Um, very much not a kiddies comic. Uh, there's a lot of like deep meaning and adult themes in it and stuff. But uh, in terms of artwork, very, very splendid to look at, you might say. The colours are really good. They're obviously not Sam Keith's directly. Um, though I'm sure he had some input. But the artwork's cool. The artwork's pretty fucking neat. Um, see if they have any of his bits where he's got like watercolours and shit as opposed to just the standard <laughs> whatever. Uh, and then issue six. Oh, this is glossier pages. They obviously upped the production value somewhat. He fights like a street shark type character, which is kind of cool. There you go. So as well as the digital colours, he's also got his own hand-painted colour panels in there, which is pretty neat, which is what I mean when I say he's more of like an artist as opposed to just a comic book artist, um, which is pretty neat to see. Lots of lines and shit, very cool shapes, which is one thing. He does these weird panels, which are like, hmm, um, but the shapes and forms he puts into a lot of his stuff is very, very cool. Very dynamic, very outstanding. More of that stuff, that's very cool. I assume watercolours, inks, watercolours, that sort of thing. Very good contrast to the digital colour of the rest of it. Pretty unique, you know the guy. Um, similar time, similar vein, Image Comics, Pit, number one. Um, I think Pit was always sort of like hit and miss. Some people loved it, some people hated it. Um, the artwork by Dale Keown, uh, that guy, is is amazing. His inking and stuff is just so good. Or whatever, hatching that arm. His fingers, the tendons, the veins and shit. Really, really fucking good. Um, he does loads of really cool Hulk uh, drawings. I think he's done Hulk comics. Uh I don't know much about him. He's just one of those artists. I've seen some of his stuff and I've really liked it. Really dynamic. Very cool. Good comic book art. And very, very uh, pinpoint 90s comic book art. Image comics. Muscles, chains, claws, hair and shit. Fucking cool. Yeah, if you just look at like how he puts a body together, these lines for the neck tendons and shit, it's really, really cool. Very badass. I've not read a single word of this, but I've looked at it because it looks cool and the drawings are good. But that's pretty typical. Oh, Sam Keith. There you go, Sam Keith drawing pit. Um, as I understand it, uh, a lot of image artists had Pitt in their comic, like show up at some point to do something or did crossovers or whatever. I think Pitt was quite a popular character for other artists to include in their work. Yeah. That's cool. Very, You can see the max shapes in there. That's neat. And then we have Pitt issue one. Again, well, this is Darkness and Pitt, but still... Um, same artist, Dale Keown, drawing it. And you can see how it's clearly the same artist. But he's obviously grown and developed. It's a lot cleaner. The digital colouring adds to that effect. Um, let's see if we can find... This is the darkness. He's got his own shit going on. The pit is really what we want to see, isn't it? There you go. You can see the inking underneath the digital colour. It's the same guy, but a lot tidier. You know, he's grown up, he's refined his craft, does his thing, claw hands, very good. The guy. Um, like most of this box, uh, it's... I saw it on the shelf, I saw Pitt, I saw the artwork, 
So I picked it up because it looked good, and that's the point, isn't it? Have shit that looks good. Um, Guardians Team Up. It's a Rocket Raccoon Deadpool Team Up comic. I read it. I thought it was okay. I don't even know who does the artwork on it. Uh, Mike Norton. I don't really know the name. The artwork's sort of, eh, it's adequate, it's good enough. I remember this being kind of funny. Rocket Raccoon is a pretty funny character. Deadpool's a pretty funny character, I guess. If you're into that kind of thing, that's neat, that's cool. We like some guns and shit. Um, yeah, I picked that up just because I thought it would be funny, and it was, it was a fun little romp. Grizzly Shark versus Sea Bear. Ryan Otley, now uh, premier Amazing Spider-Man artist, which is very cool. Um, frankly, one of the best Spider-Man artists I've seen. Um, I love his work. I love the the splats he does. The like liquid blood splats and things he does in his comics are, are very cool. Um, yeah, he's got an amazing cartoony style. Uh, but but it's not too cartoony. It's like just stylistic enough to be silly cartoony. But then when it comes to doing like serious action and monsters and things, and pages like that, he's done some spreads in Amazing Spider-Man, which I haven't got any of. I need to. I'll buy a, a bunch and show them off at some point. Um, he does some really good spreads of Spider-Man fighting all kinds of characters and monsters and stuff. But that's just so so cool. It's got good flow to it, it's just, it's well drawn, it's dynamic and impressive, that's funny. Zombie baby, I guess. Um, yeah, I love Ryan Otley's work, I don't own much of it, uh, so I'll have to fix that. But I got this just because, you know, it's funny. That's funny, that, that's funny. We love some, we love funny, funny's good, funny, funny. Oh! How did that get in there? Oh, bit of love, Hina. Um, we'll we'll just ignore that and pretend that I didn't um, trace the uh, girls on the front except draw them without their bikinis and swimsuits on. When I was a teenager, Hellboy in Hell, Mike Mignola, the legend, Mike Mignola. Um, there's not really much to say. This is the first issue of his In Hell series, which led to the eventual final Hellboy comic, which is cool. Um, I got the collected editions of this first half, and then I've got the individual issues of the second half. Um, so this is the only one of these I've got knocking about. But it's 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 everything you'd know and expect and love from Mr. Mignola for his Hellboy work, which is cool. Good story, very, very sombre, uh, sort of slow-moving, thoughtful Hellboy piece. Another Mignola comic, I've shown this one off in a another video, I forget where exactly. Just a little one-off Batman story, drawn by M Mignola of Hellboy. So the artwork, uh, I know for a fact Mignola is very specific about the colours that are used. Um, I don't think he does them himself in these comics especially, but he is very, very specific. Um, you know, a lot of times the colourists take the thing and they sort of, they'll have notes, but they'll do their thing to it. They'll add their art to the comic. But with Mike Mignola, he's very, you know, these colours specifically have to be used in these ways um, because he creates very specific looking artwork. It's not just, you know, 90s comic book art. It's, it's very, very much his own, which is cool. Oh, Web of Spider-Man issue 70, November 1990. Are you ready for Spider-Hulk? I got this purely, I ordered it online. It's in terrible condition, but it's Spider-Man Hulk. There was a more recent one. Um, I didn't pick it up because I thought, fuck it. Uh, when I was in the shop. Spider-Man gets infected with gamma rays or something, becomes the Spider-Hulk. What's not to love? I've drawn it a couple of times. I might draw it again sometime soon, more recently. We'll see. Uh, I 
thing I started reading it and then got bored. I was like, eh, I don't really care. I just like the look of the Hulk in a Spider-Man costume. It's quite a fun look. Oh no, shit's happening, I guess. And now he's... Oh, Spider-Man, New York's cuddliest superhero. Oh, that's, that's nice. Nice. No. Rocket Raccoon, here we go. Um, I've got a bunch of these. Yes, um, I, I think that's all of them from the series that was released. By Scotty Young. We all know Scotty Young for his little baby Marvel characters and also uh, Fairyland, which I have a connection with, which is cool. Therefore, I have a connection to Guardians of the Galaxy in a very roundabout way, a few degrees of separation. Now, I picked this up, I think issue two first because of the cover. I very, very much liked that artwork. Um, Scotty Young's uh, drawing and then uh, Beaulieu, Beaulieu, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but he did the colours or they, them did the colours. Um, saw this, thought it looked cool, picked it up, gave it a read and genuinely the Rocket Raccoon series, I will say this now, my review of this, one of the most entertaining comic series I've ever read. I've not read many, obviously I say that all the time, I look at them, I don't read them. Um, but from that I went and got the previous issue, the first issue, and then every subsequent issue forming the lot. Um, the artwork is, is, I think it's written by Scotty Young as well. Uh, story and artwork by Scotty Young, which is very cool in itself. He obviously said, hey, let me do this, and they had enough faith in him to say, yeah, go ahead, fucking do it. And they, they did, yeah, which is cool. Um, so the artwork is Scotty Young's sort of trademark ink cartoonish style, which is great uh, for what it is, considering it's a raccoon running around with guns and shit. It should be fun to look at and funny to look at and read. Um, it shouldn't be taken too seriously. Um, there are, you know, sad moments, but for the most part, it's all good, fun, rocket raccoon hijinks, lots of space wars, gunfights, there's uh, a prison break in at least one of the uh, issues, lots of robots and shit and there's backstabbing and there's past characters coming in and all kinds of shit. Um, yeah, and like I say, just uh, one of the most fun to read comics that goes in prison. I think this will show there's a really good prison break scene. Um, yeah, here. Um, they like, yeah, I mean, take a minute to actually look at it, but they're going through ducts and pipes and things, fighting off prison wardens, space prison, space wardens, space cars. It's just a really fun, interesting comic to look at and to read. You can take in the artwork and it's great. Loads of really cool design and fun cartooning. Uh, very good to look at if you're interested in cartoons and inking and such. Um, and the story's fun too. You know, bounty hunters, spacemen, aliens, robots, guns, more importantly. Um, I think after, I think he did all the first series, however many issues that was. I'm not sure if it was... I think the first six issues. Um, oh, no, okay, even this one. Um, so Jake Parker, I think. Yeah, Jake Parker. Oh, yeah, Scotty Young did the this bit. Oh, this is actually a really good issue. Um, so they're around a campfire telling stories to these like kid campers or whatever, and then Groot tells a story. So the entire story is basically visual because all the text, because Groot is the one telling the story, is I am Groot. I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot. So he's telling the story, but you know what's going on via the visuals. Um, Jake Parker's visuals, meh, sort of love and hate Jake Parker for various reasons, but his artwork, you can't really deny, is pretty spot on and incredible, especially in terms of sci-fi um, design. 
you know, he's very much known for his machines and robots and things. So they have this whole adventure. I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot. Uh, they find the chests. I am Groot. Uh, what's in the chests? I am Groot. Oh, it was all a birthday surprise for Rocket Raccoon. And he's mad because he thought he was going to get some treasure. He's all upset. Uh, he loved it, though. Um, oh, and funny end to the story. The alien kids are looking at each other like, uh, did you understand any of that? Nope, not a word. But then one tree leaf kid is going, oh, what a great story, clapping, that was amazing. That's quite funny. The only one who understood it is obviously of a similar breed to Groot. Um, yeah, so fun, fun comic. Um, then there's other artists took on um, some of the other issues. Very, very different to Scotty Young, but very, very cool. Uh, looking artwork for what it is the amount of ads marvel puts in their fucking comics come on man you're a zillion dollar company fucking stop it um this issue in particular uh jake parker took the artwork and there yeah, flipped right to it <laughs> uh that so yeah like i say love and hate jake parker but he does shit like this giant fucking crab kraken monster just pretty fucking cool. Um, I can learn a lot from Jake Parker as well for his spaceport designs and alien designs and things. Um, anyway, that was Rocket Raccoon. Um, can't really recommend it enough. Well, next up, Spawn! Uh, featuring Cerebus the Aardvark. This is, that's the only reason I have this particular issue. I was never a huge fan of Spawn. Um, but I was quite a big fan of Cerebus, so... I got this because he's in it and I still haven't read it. I might read it at some point. I might not. I don't know. Todd McFarlane, you know, he's known for a reason. His artwork's bloody good. Oh, speaking of Spawn, issue one, Spawn, covered by Ashley Wood. That's madness. I believe this is, uh, it's like a an artist edition of... Well, director's cut of the first Spawn issue. Um, Spawn issue one. And so it's got the original pages. You can see the, the lines and the, the Marvel headings and stuff. The original inks of the first Spawn comic. And then um, Todd McFarlane explaining a bit about them. Um, which is very, very cool to see. Because, you know, you can look at comics and go, wow, this is really good artwork. But when you see the actual inks, you can see like the blue pencils underneath. You can see, you know, how it's ink lines. It's not computer generated. You can see white out and stuff. Very, very, very cool to see. Very, very cool to see. We do like that. That's some good shit right there. That's some good comic book art right there. Yeah, like I say, Todd McFarlane uh, made his millions quite rightly businessman that he is but also a very 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 good artist for the old comicky booky works um and there was there was a, a few of these with variant covers um this one was ashley wood so i got that one because we all know how much i blow ashley wood's penis pencil head um ted mckeever i didn't know much about him i still don't um, Ted McKeever is an artist whose inking style is quite uh, unique. He's done a bunch of stuff for like Marvel and DC, I think. Um, slightly more traditional, but still keeping his own style, um, which is quite a unique sort of cartoonish style of inking. Um, I was intrigued by that, so I picked it up. I liked the inking style, so I bought it. I bought the next couple of issues. Um, and for whatever reason was unable to get the following issues. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's about a cartoonist and I guess like trials and tribulations of being a comic book artist or whatever. Um, but then some surreal shit happens and he gets mixed up in a bunch of shit. Um, the cover art sort of... I like the big text, but I feel more could be done with that. But at the same time, it's his own... Uh, comic book his own creation if that's what he wants it to look like that's absolutely a-okay um some very interesting visuals some fun fun shapes and cartoons fun drawings and shit 
it's like an editor talking about what he wants to see from comic books and him lamenting on what he actually wants to draw as opposed to what they want to see. Some good shit, man. Some good, good shit. Uh, I think this is a good example of uh, making your own shit. Like, you've done what you're supposed to do. You've made a living doing comics for years and years and years. And when it comes down to it, you're like, right, what do I want to draw? So you sit down, you draw your own comic, and then this is what comes out. And they go, cool, we'll print it, sell some copies. Good shit. Um, uh, talking about inking styles. Tangible, scratchy, sludgy, obscure. It's quite funny. Uh, yeah. I want to make this kind of comic, so I make this kind of comic. That's the good shit we like to see. I do like the contrast in, like, I don't know, nice, neat inking and then weird, bizarre... Bizarre, strange shit. Um, I think this is the end of the box. Uh, we finish with, I guess, a pretty well-known series, Kick-Ass. Uh, I have the series of Kick-Ass 2 as well somewhere. Um, I got this primarily because I saw that. John Romita Jr. was always a favourite of mine for his Spider-Man work. I'm aware he's done loads of like Daredevil and other stuff as well, but his Spider-Man work always jumped out at me because his style is very, very, very unique. Um, there's something about it that is quite typical of like Marvel comics and shit uh, but at the same time very very much outstanding in its own way um, quite simple in certain ways especially uh, you can see how a lot of this is the colorist has done a lot of the work on the, most of this it's mostly just outlines and not a lot of heavy inking um, which John Romita Jr. has done some of, you know, a lot of like heavy inking, his own inking and stuff in his comics. But I guess for this, um, you know, I, I know for a fact he's said in interviews how his style is somewhat built out of necessity of having to work quickly. Um, so he might not have time to sit and do musculature and work on every little, you know, hatching every muscle and you know, every wrinkle and every bit of clothing. Um, so he developed this style where the forms are quite simple, the wrinkles in the clothes are there, but they're not, you know, amazingly rendered. It's often just a lot of lines that sort of suggest creases in cloth. Um, and again, with this issue, or this series especially, a lot of it is left up to the colourist to, to fill in over his outlines. Um, and there's a blockiness to his work, which I quite like. I don't know why exactly, but um, I quite like it. And I do like the simple... Not, it's not because it's not simple, but like the sort of shapes he uses are pretty simple. There's nothing too complicated going on. Um, and that's a good thing to look at if you're into comics, I guess. Especially in terms of creating a comic, this is a good artist to look at. Because he gets everything done, but, you know, and in, in his own words, in quite a, a quick, speedy manner. Um, and, of course, you all know Kick-Ass turned into film, and then another film. And... It was okay. I mean, I read the first series. It was sort of okay. I quite liked the, uh, the idea of it. It was quite new at the time. The second series was like meh, whatever. And the artwork is this guy, and it's all very good. Um, that's this my empty box now. Um, hey, fuck. Uh, I hope you liked it. There'll be more at some point. Maybe. Bye.